Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Lady Family Live. I do not know what episode number this is, but I know that we've been doing these for over three years now. So if you've uh, tuned in in the past and or if you're tuning in for the first time tonight, thank you very much for supporting us. Uh, small Family Winery, that's who we are. This is what we do. So great to connect with you um, online. Uh, great to connect with you when you're here as well, but nice that we can uh, come into your homes tonight and uh, and share some knowledge about the wines, uh, the new wine club releases. We're also going to talk about poetry tonight. A lot, a lot, a lot of great wines that I'm excited to uh, tell you about. Uh, but before we jump into that, um, I would just like to cover just really a couple things tonight. Um, one is if you haven't come to see us recently, uh, definitely consider coming out. This is truly the nicest time of year in Napa Valley. Harvest is kind of just wrapping up. Um, but you can see the reflection here on the glass of how beautiful the blue skies are, the hills. Everything is going to start changing color soon with fall uh, setting in, but it's a great time. And I wanted to also mention that if you haven't um, been here in a while, we recently refreshed our backstage tasting lounge, all new furniture. We worked with a killer designer and it's got a far more rock star, rock star edge that uh, we'd love for you to see. So come and see us, come check out Backstage. It is it is really amazing. Um, you can see photos online if you're interested in checking that out. Um, and the last thing I wanna mention is just, uh, if you're looking to place an order for Thanksgiving, you know, it's it's what, a month, a little over a month away. So we'll send out a reminder about that, those those final dates, but we wanna make sure you got some great wines for the holidays. So uh, if, you, if you love what you got in your shipment, you wanna bolster your seller a little bit for the upcoming holidays, let us know. Um, let our wine club team know they're going to be joining us tonight. I believe they are in the chat. So they'll answer any questions that you have. Uh, shout out to Janelle, Kristen, Liz, our new Elizabeth, our new, um, wine club, uh, member. I'm sure you guys have been chatting with her on the phone. So shout out to her for joining the team. We've got a really amazing group and I know that they're eager to answer your questions and take care of any orders that you have. So that's going to be it for the, the housekeeping items. Um, Chris Tynan is going to join me in a little bit to talk about the Cliff Lady Wines, but I'm going to quickly uh, run through our, our Fell offerings for those of you who um, who are part of the Fell Club or, or are looking to maybe add some of these great Anderson Valley wines um, to your to your life. Uh, I've got this beautiful wine right now in my glass. This is our um, brand newly released sparkling wine. This was a, a last minute addition to the webinar, but truly a, an exceptional wine coming in Anderson Valley. Um, this is Savoy Vineyard. We're going to talk a lot about Savoy Vineyard tonight because that is what um, is common with all three of the fell wines that we're going to taste. This is sparkling wine. It is a brute style, so it is actually a blend of both Chardonnay um, and Pinot Noir. This particular vintage, 50-50. So 50% Chardonnay, 50% Pinot Noir. It comes from a great vintage, 2018. We've talked about that vintage a lot here on the webinar at, you know, in Cl at Cliff Lady Vineyards in Napa. Fell Wines, Anderson Valley, 18 was an exceptional year. And I want to also mention that this wine is made in the traditional method. So same way they would make the wines um, over in the old world in Champagne. Um, Kristen is telling me that the chat's not working. So I'm going to see if I can get that going. Thanks, Kristen. Apple Watch notification. Love it. Uh, <laughs> Root, 50-50%. Traditional method. So very much, again, what you'd see in Champagne. Um, let me just throw a text message in there. And uh, to me, you know, a wine that is very reminiscent of, of Champagne. It's certainly not a, a sweet style. There's only two grams per liter of dosage added to this wine. So it's, it's a wine that's um, quite lifted, zippy, fresh. That Pinot Noir that's in there is going to give it a lot of uh, its core fruit. There's some peachy notes, a little bit of apricot. Um, gosh, I love like there's this like lemon kind of toastiness. Um, when I say traditional method, I'm basically talking about how the wine is aged in bottle on its lees before uh, it's disgorged prior to, to going under cork and uh, being sold. Um, this wine spent four years in the bottle on the lees before we disgorged. So you'll pick up a little bit of that toastiness, those classic aromas that you love in champagne. Uh, you can get them here. Really a lovely wine, I mean, just released, but certainly something you can enjoy now, something that um, you could forget about the cellar for a couple of years to just let that acidity just round out a little bit. But right now it's very juicy. We only made 158 cases of this. We did not make any magnums in the 2018 vintage, so there's um, no large formats, but um, plenty of, of 750 mil bottles. 
available. So if you're interested in trying this, if you maybe you tried the 2015, uh, we made this in 2015. Again, in 2018, we don't make it every year. So it is something that's kind of special. And we only do it in the best years. Um, but wonderful wine will be perfect to start out your Thanksgiving dinner. Um, you know, maybe New Year's. Think about that. Fell, brute, sparkling. It's got the lovely tulip on there, of course. Tribute to my grandmother, Florence Elsie Lady. Love it. Love the package. Everything about that is fantastic. Um, is that is that chat working for everybody? I don't uh, I don't see. It looks like I was able to send a message out, but if anybody has any questions, um, it looks like there's a question in the Q and A, which is great. Um, we'll get to those as we can get there. Looks like chat's not working. Okay, Q and A is working though. That's wonderful. Loving our chat. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm still not uh, a Zoom professional expert. I've got it set to everybody. I've got, let's see. Attending, oh, here we go. Let's go. There we go. It's the three dots. I found it perfect. That's the way it goes. Sometimes in show biz, right? Got it. Show's got to go on. Here it is. Second wine of the night. We're going to do the Fell Chardonnay. Again, Savoy Vineyard. So um, sparkling wine brings the, the Chardonnay and the Pinot Noir together 50-50. But now we're focusing single varietal. 100% Chardonnay. 2021 vintage you know this was a vintage marked largely by drought so um the lack of water is is a little stressful early in the season especially when there's there's uh concerns of frost potential but uh what's great about um drought years on the other side is that if you can get through that the fruit that comes out is really concentrated really expressive and uh, we'll be talking about the 2021 cliff lady reds when chris is on so he'll get go, go a little more in depth with uh, 2021, but this is the Chardonnay from Fell, the Savoy Vineyard. Savoy Vineyard is, is recognized as one of the greatest vineyards in the Anderson Valley, if not, you know, North America. The Wall Street Journal's written it up as, as such. And it truly just is, it benefits from being in a cool climate. Uh, it benefits from being in the, basically right in the midpoint of the Anderson Valley. So warm days and cool nights, you know, in the, in the, um, in the cooler years, uh, it stays a little warmer because it's a little further south. Um, and the opposite is true in the in the warmer years. It stays a little cooler because uh, it's further north. So truly just the most perfect place to grow Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. There's not a lot of Chardonnay on this site. It's only a you know, few acres, three, four acres. And um, we're only one of two wineries that make a Savoy Vineyard Chardonnay. So it's very rare to, and very hard to find and from an exceptional exceptional site. Now, if you know the Fell Wines Chardonnays, uh, we do make a couple of them. The Anderson Valley being super clean, crisp, neutral, fermented. This does see a little bit of new oak, 42% new oak. So it's got a little bit of that toastiness on the palate, not a whole lot, but just a little bit of, you know, spice and, and some qualities that, that you could sense from oak. But um, the thing that I really love about the winemaking here is halfway through its um, uh, aging in barrel, we take it out, we put it in stainless steel barrels, and that just helps crystallize all those flavors and really just bring everything together um, prior to bottling. And it and it's, it truly is an old, uh, traditional old world method that we uh, started bringing in maybe in the 2018 vintage, and uh, we've loved it ever since. It brings a, a flinty minerality to the wine, and it just keeps those, those fruit flavors very uh, fresh again. Similar to that that sparkling wine, I get a little bit of that apricot and lemon and, and toastiness. Um, there's there's a lot of green apple here, so this isn't your you know big oaky buttery Chardonnay. It does go through a little bit of malolactic fermentation. It does see a little bit of new oak, but it's not a big butter bomb style. Very fresh and clean. Absolutely delicious. Um, so wine that great now. Buy a few bottles if you you know if you haven't tried it. Buy a few bottles, stick a few back in the a couple of them back in the back of your wine fridge or in your cellar. Give it a few years, let it age. Some of these older Savoy Vineyard Chardonnays from 2014, 2015, 16. It's just like white Burgundy. It just picks up a little bit more richness and the fruit gets a little more um, dense as time goes on. Lovely, absolutely stunning. We're going to keep it going because I don't want to keep Chris waiting too long. You know how winemakers are, especially during harvest. 2021 Fell Wines Savoy Vineyard Pinot Noir. 
So again, greatest vineyard in the Anderson Valley, one of the greatest in North America. There's only, um, you know, maybe eight or eight to 10 wineries that, that get fruit from this vineyard. So very exclusive, really only the best of the best in Pinot Noir get fruit from this site. Gosh, I wish you guys could smell this. Hopefully you have a bottle open. If you don't, um, if you get, as soon as you get this wine, just smells like the Anderson Valley to me. Um, I often think of it as, you know, if you drink a lot of Russian River Valley or California Pinot Noir, there's a lot of ripeness and fruit, of course. Um, maybe you drink some Willamette Valley or Oregon Pinots, which can be a little bit lift, more lifted and lighter. Um, certainly old world, you know, Burgundy tends to, tends to have a little bit more brightness to the wines. This is kind of the balance of that. The Anderson Valley has the ripeness that you'd expect from California, but there's just a lift and a freshness. I've already, you know, spoken to how the cool climate of the Anderson Valley is, is a really unique thing to that area, um, to, to California wine in general. And it's those ranges in temperature throughout the day that really make Savoy uh, what it is. So warm days, cool nights, warm days, cool nights. Not unlike what we see here in the Stag Zee District in Napa. It's just it doesn't get as hot. And the heat during the day doesn't last as long. So it's, it's kind of perfect for, for Pinot Noir. This vintage, um, it didn't see any new oak at all. So that was another thing that was sort of a new technique. Um, just letting the, the fruit speak, um, not, not letting any... Uh, any oak kind of influence the the profile and the nose. Um, Savoy to me, it's always the most savory of the Pinot Noirs that we make. So you know, there's some there's some cherry and of course black cherry and, and a lot of those those fruit driven qualities. But there's some spice and like almost like a black tea quality as well. There's always a little hint of of mint, like a spearmint quality that that is um, significant to Savoy. And gosh, it's like piney forest floor. Uh, wow. Texturally shows you that this vineyard, you know, west facing, so a lot of sunlight in the afternoon. It's got some tannin, which tells me that this wine is going to age for decades. Um, you may not think of that with Pinot Noir, but I would tell you if you are going to um, open this anytime soon, open it in the morning for the dinner that night. Give it lots of air because there is some some structure there. It's a little bit thicker skins because of that, all that sun um, throughout the afternoon. Uh, from again that west facing aspect uh 345 cases Just tiny production tiny production um gosh what else can i say about this wine combination of heritage clones so your your california uh, calera mount eden swan that's from the some of the newer sections of the vineyard and then you get some of the older sections of the vineyard that were planted to the dijon clones so um the the heritage clones kind of really bring out the fruit in the wine and those those um those, I guess those old world clones certainly drive more of that savoriness and, and more of those old world qualities. So an absolute pleasure to drink now. Um, hope you guys enjoy that. Perfect for Thanksgiving. I'm not personally a big cranberry sauce person, but this is basically like would be my, my cranberry sauce with turkey. I just have it on the side in the glass. Delicious. Absolutely love it. So that covers um, what we we're going to talk about with Fell tonight. Uh, I'll quickly take a look at the Q&A just to make sure there's anything about this. I see some, some poetry questions, um, but we'll get to those when we get to that wine. And uh, Chris is eager to come out and tell us all about how things are going here. I uh, just want to make sure we got all these questions. Cool. Perfect. All right. So here we go. Time for the Cliff Lady. Run through some Cliff Lady wines with the man himself, our director of winemaking, Christopher Tynan, uh, joining us during, you know, the busiest time of year. Uh, you might be able to hear some of the action and, and maybe as we close out the night, I'll, I'll pick the camera up and we'll, we'll take a little peek in the winery. But um, you guys are well, almost through harvest, eh? Yeah, we have our last reds coming in tomorrow. So we'll be done with harvest uh, officially tomorrow. Yeah. And what do you think so far? How have how things been going? Oh, gosh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful vintage. It's hard to find anything um, wrong about it. It's just been really easy. There's been no major um, weather interruptions. Mm -hmm. It's been a long season. So it's been, um, it started a little later. We didn't start picking white wines until um, after Labor Day. And then, then we kind of finished that very easily over the next four weeks after that, three yeah. more weeks. Um, and then red started mid September and just kind of continued on until October. Yeah, we're we're getting to the end of October almost. Yes, but um, 
it's great. We just haven't had any real weather threats of rain or, or major heat waves or anything like that to really um, make us make some hard decisions. And it's just been nice to let things hang and, and get perfectly right while we're still <laughs> fresh acidity too. Sure. Great. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I've been saying that today because it was 90, it was like 94 today. Yeah. It felt like 104 because we're just not used to the heat. It's been so moderate mm. all year. So, I mean, I got to think that the wines are going to show that. But yeah. And then the great thing is it got down to 49, 50 degrees last night too. So what, what a big swing from even in, in late October, but most of our fruits in and we're just picking some of the stuff up from our cooler locales like Carneros. And so mm -hmm. um, it's been a spectacular year spectacular i can't wait to have the wines from 23 i think classic vintage plays into our strengths um yeah it reminds me of kind of um 2005 2009 2010 somewhere in there a little bit of 2018 probably a little mm -hmm. bit thrown in which are all great great vintages mm -hmm. and so yeah man. well thanks for the the update and again everybody watching if you have questions for chris about harvest or, or what's happening out in napa winemaking questions throw them in the chat, throw them in the Q and A, but we're going to get to tasting. We've got three Cliff Lady red wines we're going to have tonight. And we're going to start with uh, a very special project, um, Crossfade 2021. Um, you know, big thanks to all of you, uh, all of our wine club members. Uh, it's because of you that we kept making this wine. We made it in 2019 for the first time as a wine club exclusive. And it was largely because we didn't have the 2020 vintage. So we made some special new wines and we didn't know if we'd make them again, but um, due to popular demand, we we made another vintage of Crossfade. So uh, really proud of of that. Very stressful, I have to say. I I don't normally help these guys work on wines and blend wines, but you know we did it once, and the wine was great. And then when you have to try to do it again, yeah, I can imagine how that is for you, right? Every <laughs> year you're trying to you're to really trying to you know make make better wines. So tell us about the uh, the 2021 Crossfade. Well, why you should tell me about it. It's your wine. No, um, I'll give you just a little hint on some of the vineyards that go into this. So there's a couple of blocks um, of poetry that made it into this wine, um, along with some Cabernet Sauvignon, or excuse me, some Cabernet Franc uh, and Cabernet Sauvignon from Madrona Ranch uh, in this vintage. Um, and then sprinkled in with a little bit of uh, Rhythm Vineyard here on the property mm -hmm. um, to kind of flesh out some of the cab and... Um, Wow, it's it's a stunner. I mean, this wine is. I'm so glad that you introduced this this kind I'm of. Glad you it. like it because it's hard for me to like. Let's keep making it. And you're it's like, fun. Eh. I mean, we love. We've always loved that high fidelity, that play of Cab Franc and Merlot, and then just to see Franc play so well with Cabernet and make such a compelling, complex wine, um, especially when you're using poetry and Madrona Ranch grapes. So, um, Madrona is what typically goes into Samba, right? That's one of the. You know, that's one of our top wines. So for those of you who don't know Majorna Ranch, I mean, that's Abrews, one of his, his flagship uh, vineyard in, in the St. Lena Appalachian, just mm -hmm. tucked up next to Spotswood in the, in the hillside there. Um, so a tremendous uh, kind of terroir that goes into this and special grapes. I like this was almost down the middle, 49 Cab Franc, 48 Cabernet Sauvignon, 2% Merlot, 1% Petit Verdot. So really that interplay of Franck and, and Cabernet Sauvignon, I mean, that, that was kind of the whole idea with the, you know, crossfade, two things coming together. Um, what a fun wine to make, 523 cases. So, I mean, we made just enough for the wine club and uh, it sounds like there's a, there's a waiting list for more. So let us know if you, if you love it, um, we'll, we'll do our utmost to get more of this to you. Um, but this is a fun wine to make, right? It's the one wine we kind of get to sit around and, and and you know just imagine what we can do with uh, something entirely new and like I say it was tough to try to recreate the magic so to speak that we had back when we were planning the 19 so again did not have a 2020 so this this wine went from 2019 now to the new vintage is 2021 and Chris what what are your thoughts on on the 2021 vintage in general um it was after a tough 2020 vintage we we needed a good a good solid vintage for uh to kind of make up for that and we were kind of gifted with the 2021s um they're so floral and aromatic each wine from 2021 has this beautiful perfume these aromatics mm -hmm. that just kind of fill the glass and um they're so elegant i think it's one of our most elegant vintages mm -hmm. so um it's just going to be kind of a a cerebral vintage for for wine lovers that really love to get in that glass and pick out 
the myriad of different aromas and flavors that are coming out. Um, where do you think they're like in general, the wines, like where do you think they're at right now? Are they, I mean, I think they taste great. This was open by the way we opened this um, maybe an hour ago. So it hasn't been open very long, but you know, is this a vintage that you're, you're thinking, you know, drink, drink sooner or later wait i mean what what's what's your take on on the age ageability of 21 i think they're going to age forever but oh, i think yeah. kind of like 18 where they're they kind of have a kind of an easy accessibility sure. early on um in just that incredible they're already incredibly integrated with their oak and their um their tannin and their aromatics and fruit flavors they're um so i would I would encourage you to open them, open some up young and, and, but don't be shy on aging these things. They're going to mm -hmm. last for forever. They're built on some beautiful acidity and, and um, gorgeous tannin and just 2021 is, is a beautiful, solid vintage. Definitely some amazing like some juiciness there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, has your winemaking changed a little bit from say 18 to 21? Um, anything different that you're doing here in the winery to... I, don't know. I think we're just uh, constantly adapting to our, our vineyards are getting older and more mature. Those roots are getting down deep into the soil and becoming a little bit more expressive and just really showing off the terroir a little bit more. And uh, for us, just kind of, we don't really, we can take our foot off the gas pedal um, in, for, for lack of a better metaphor mm -hmm. and just letting the vineyard really speak and letting that terroir speak. Um, and that's the benefit of, of doing a lot of hard work over the last 20 plus years of replanting and getting uh, clones and rootstocks in the right spot on the on the properties and and then enjoying the um, of, of the benefits of just what we've invested in over these 20, sure. 20 plus years. And I think we're seeing that in these wines are sophisticated and elegant and, and very Totally agree. I mean, I think the 19s showed that. I think I've expressed that to you many times, how beautiful those wines are in the on the aroma side of things and um, just texturally so well integrated. I feel like 21 is, is reminiscent of that. Um, and, you know, got great vintages on the way too. I see Carol's drinking the Crossfade tonight. So cheers to, to Carol for cracking the Crossfade. Hopefully you're enjoying that. Um, again, I feel like this wine, two, three hours from now is probably just going to like, just really explode um so don't be afraid to give these wines some air guys of yeah course, of course beautiful love that cross fade let's uh let's keep moving though we've got another uh 2021 coming our way this is the 2021 rutherford cabernet sauvignon so i'm really excited about this because we've never made a rutherford wine i don't think in the history of our winery so this is something that, um, you know, the, the vineyard selection wines is something we've done for a very long time with the Howe Mountain, um, you know, Oakville in the past, Diamond Mountain in the past, um, now Rutherford coming in. Um, tell us about the Rutherford Appalachian. Like what, what was, I guess, if you had all the choices, I mean, I'm sure you could choose between many Appalachians. What was exciting about Rutherford for you? Like what, what are some of the great wines you've had and what kind of compelled you to, to make this wine? Oh gosh. Well, you know, I think it was Andre Chelichev. Um, he was the first one to coin the phrase Rutherford dust. Oh yeah. He was at BV back in the fifties, sixties, seventies, um, where a lot of those old George Silla tour, uh, vineyard plantings were, sure. were, um, and I think he kind of recognized the quality of Rutherford and the, especially the, even on the Valley floor, but up into the bench lands. Um, and there is just a quality to the tannin and a Rutherford wine. And it's more like cocoa powder. I get lots of loam uh, from kind of dusty earthy aroma and loam. And do, it doesn't matter whether you go from the West side to Rutherford or to the East side, I think it's probably a little bit more pronounced on the West side, but um, where this fruit comes from. And it's just, it's just screams like classic Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. And when we think of all those great BBs from the 60s and 70s, those mm -hmm. old George Latours, uh, uh, it's just classic Cabernets, cassis, it's blackberry, raspberry, um, all over this beautiful, again, cocoa powder, mm -hmm. dusty tannin. It's, it's dusty, but it's not aggressive dusty. It's just like, a, it's, it's that cocoa powder. That's, polished. Oh yeah. yeah. Wow. And that's 100% Cabernet Sauvignon too. So correct, yeah. You're not softening it up with Merlot or anything. Correct. Um, yeah, that's a wine. That's a. 
I, like Derek said, that's a that's an early accessible wine. Mm -hmm. Again, only being open for about an hour. Um, got a lot of red fruit there, kind of that like you said raspberry. Got a lot of that for sure, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, but not not aggressively tannic in any in any way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. So this will be fun to play around with now for the next, just because we brought some Rutherford in in 22, I'm assuming, and then yep. again here in 23. Yeah, so we'll, the program yep. will continue. Yep, we're picking up, we got a little bit of uh, Heights Trailside Vineyards, another legendary kind of uh, Rutherford Vineyard that we're working with in 22 and 23. And um, again, signature kind of Rutherford dust on there. It's just mm -hmm. so beautiful. You can smell it in the fermenters, like when we're fermenting right now, mm -hmm. you can just it just comes out immediately after, you know, when fermentation starts. It's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing how terroir works. Mm -hmm. and, and shows, oh, yeah, this it's shows just, itself off. This is not, I mean, this is distinctly different than Stagsy District. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I feel you totally like quintessential Napa Valley Cabernet. Really wonderful. We'll have to do a Rutherford like tasting, you know, many of the, the BBs you mentioned and maybe throw some Staglin in there. All right. Yeah. Some heights. I yeah. mentioned that. That'd be cool. Love it. Great. Uh, the old Fremark Abbey is too from the Beauchet Vineyard. Uh, oh, back yeah. In there. Yeah. Those are another legendary, legendary wines from the 70s that are uh, inspired us to make this wine. It's not an appellation I, I you know, really know a lot about. Obviously, we talk a lot about Stag's Leap being based here. We've got vineyards in Carneros and Calistoga. We've made the Tokalon Cabernet, so Oakville. But Rutherford's like I, I cruise through it. I go to the Rutherford Grill. And he, it's like I don't, you know, I don't, I don't drink too many Rutherford wines. So I'll have to have to do more, educate myself a little more on Rutherford and the and the great wines. I do know that I've had the Stagland wines lots of times. They're they're really really fantastic. Um, but yeah, Rutherford. Hopefully, um, if any of you are drinking that tonight, cheers to you. See a couple others are sipping on Crossfade. So thank you for supporting that. Um, We've got, uh, what do we got here? Any questions about any of these wines? Just want to quickly check, but we've got a lot of questions about poetry, so we might as well just fly right into that. We have the 100 point rated. You're probably getting tired of hearing that, but we have the beautiful Never. poetry 2019. <laughs> we have talked about the 2019 vintage to death on this program because we've pretty much gone through every one of our wines from that vintage. The last vintage or last wine from that vintage that we're going to feature is the poetry, of course, you know, the greatest wine we make and um, the highest scoring wine, you know, we make. So let's pour you a little poetry, Chris. 2019. All right. Stag's the district, of course, all from our hillside estate vineyard here. If you visited the winery, you've probably seen this vineyard. If you've looked to the east, maybe you've stayed at the Poetry Inn, beautiful five bedroom hotel that we own and operate that sits above this vineyard. Definitely think about that special occasion. Come out, check out the new backstage area and stay at the Poetry Inn. It doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> but poetry, so poetry 2019. Uh, let's do it. Let's step back. 2019. What do, you, what do you want to say about that vintage? Well, I hate to say, you know, another great vintage, but it was, you know, it was a, an amazing uh, vintage like, like this year, just with no... Uh, very easy for winemakers you really as a winemaker you really had to try hard to mess up 19 um and again i think you know our, our focus on you know, our 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 vineyards are getting a little more mature and me getting to know the vineyard and the little nooks and crannies of that poetry vineyard better and better and um dialing in all the fermentations it's just uh, i think we're able to make more poetry at a higher level and better quality just because of the vines and, and the hard work that our vineyard crew does uh, maintaining them and and perfecting them. So um, classic vintage in Napa Valley, not not, un, not unlike um, um, this vintage, just very easy, no heat spikes, no rain, no hail, just very Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold, perfect. Well, perfect is the word, right? Perfect score, <laughs> hundred points, and Robert Parker. This is, I think, the the fourth time poetry's got a hundred because it was three from Parker, the thirteen, the eighteen, the nineteen, and then one from Jeb Dunnick. So, you know, what's exciting about that is it's it's truly now you've got you know you've got critical acclaim for this vineyard. To your point, it's becoming more mature, but this has become an iconic vineyard in the Stags Lake district. I mean, I, I don't know of any other wineries that have kind of hit that sort of stride over the last decade. So cheers to you, of course, the winemaking team and, and um, 
Allison and everybody, Beto, everybody in the vineyards making, um, just farming that fruit to the to the best of its possible potential. Um, gosh, what if, a great wine. If I can tell, if I'm not speaking out of school, Jason, Jason and I were tasting with a very famous wine critic not too long ago who um, brought this wine up as a kind of a sense memory and they were saying, wow, that 2019, mm -hmm. I'm just... It, that critic is remembering that nose of the 19. So I, I, right. I couldn't, we couldn't ask for a better, uh, um, just critics taste, you know, thousands of wines every year. And right. remember we could recall that wine out of tasting mm -hmm. it to what, two years ago. Yeah. Um, and Being so that was pretty, I was, right? I was very happy with that comment. That yeah. Pretty popular. I could see that because you're probably, you know, you're always trying to make the best wine, but you want to make wines that taste like where they're from. Right. Because then nobody, I mean, we sell some fruit from some of our vineyards, like in Carneros, and but we don't sell any fruit from from Stag's Leap District. We don't sell any of that poetry vineyard fruit. So we are the only ones who make fruit from that vineyard. And my assumption is that you're striving for that distinction, like that uniqueness of that site is what you want to come through in the bottle so that, yeah, people that love it, that's what they're going to want to come back to, right? They're Because you can't replicate it. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Gorgeous. I mean, lots of lots of bright acidity. Um, this is like the most polished tannins, and like the finish just it just goes, mm. it just goes. So I mean, I'm thoroughly enjoying this now. What would you put this at? Forty year wine, fifty? I hope to f be around to find out. I think I think so. I mean, we're building it, we're structuring like that. So that we've got the foundation of of good um, acidity and tannin and balance of alcohol so you know it's got everything in in great proportions and i think it's got the ability to go 20 30 years so make sure you buy enough for yourself and your kids and and your grandkids if you're right. extra generous don't sleep on this wine it's so good absolutely i think um there were some questions earlier about large formats and aging in large formats um Hate to tell you, but there's not a lot of large formats left of this wine. Uh, there's like, I think like a dozen magnums left. Um, so something to definitely think about. Um, my understanding, I'll let you speak to it more maybe, but magnums it tend to age, the wine tends to age better in magnum. Yeah, they'll age glacially compared to a 750. Um, and it's, it's staggering how much younger a magnum will taste 20, 30 years down the road than right. a 750. So definitely if you're interested in aging that more, or you throw a lot of big parties too. It's not sure, you know, magnets are great for big parties, but definitely they'll age a little bit uh, slower, yeah. much, much lower than 750. And that's just the volume to the air, right? Or the cork, the size of the cork. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's less surface area exposed to oxygen sure. during the aging process and more volume to absorb it. So. so think about that. Magnums, I know the holidays are coming up, said that lots of times, but um, would make certainly a great gift. We still have 750 mil, you know, six packs available of the 2019 poetry. Um, but the, the large formats are certainly getting very low, very low. So um, gosh, man, that's, that is a fantastic bottle of wine. And yeah, just it, it's poetry. It's all poetry. It's getting any more simple than that. So that's been the wines. I think we covered most of the questions that I hit. At, although, let me see the Q and A. I did not. I have not looked at. We got some things in the chat. Oh, here we go. Uh, here's a question about what level of barrel toast do we use for poetry cabernet? Have we ever tried to retoast the used barrels for other wines? Uh, you, there are companies that will sand out the inside of your barrels and try to toast them again, but the quality is really bad because the wine staves have wine in them and the toast, the toast is not very good. We, we, we don't do that. Um, we use a variety of toasts because each cooper has its own style of toasting. So where brand X's heavy toast might be completely charred inside with, you know, very, very charcoal-y kind of flavors. Brand wise, heavy toast might be very light and and long, but very gentle. So we do we use a selection of some. We use some heavy toast. We use some uh, medium plus. We use some medium. Um, we use very light toast on our light wines, so not much toast at all. And um, again, within those coopers, there's different styles, and you have to learn the styles of toasting from each cooper and working with them for years and years and years. And the forests that go into the barrels. So uh, yeah, great question. 
Uh, another question on poetry from, from Warren. He's got a lot of great questions. Uh, tonnage per acre in poetry. Is there a is there a tonnage we shoot for? Do we drop a lot of fruit in poetry? I know uh, it's naturally pretty low some, yields, but some years some years we're dropping a lot of fruit. Um, you know, in the past couple of drought years, like twenty two or twenty one, we didn't have to drop much. It was more about mm -hmm. um, manicuring the clusters. Sometimes clusters can throw a little. Uh, we call them shoulders, mm -hmm. and so they was mature differently. So we we cut those off. Um, but yeah, like we've struggled to get more than three, three and a half tons in poetry. Occasionally, if we'll have four, four tons, we'll, we'll generally they're dropping fruit at that mm -hmm. point because the vines are still, they're on very, very shallow soil. They can't handle a large crop if they try to, if they were trying to mature that large crop, the quality would, would severely decline, which we don't want. And you don't want. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> We want to make the best wine possible throughout the entire portfolio for what it, you know, for what it's worth. But poetry is where, you know, there's no corners cut. We are trying to make a world-class wine. I mean, it goes back to the founding of the winery. My dad, you know, huge collector, loved those great wines in Bordeaux, collected a lot of those great wines and, you know, dreamed one day to have a wine that could sit amongst the Lafitte's and the Moutons of the world and, you know, handful of hundred point scores that certainly that certainly makes you feel feel good about you know all of that that investment and that goal and achieving that so um question about you know owning the vineyards and the sources um you know we're a winery that we have a state vineyards in stag fleet carneros and calistoga we do source fruit from appalachians like rutherford and oakville um how mountain uh, a couple other appalachians so we're kind of a combination right we we source a little bit and we um we also have a state grown and we sell a little bit too. So we kind of do kind of do a little bit of everything for our program. Um, but I will say that wines like the Rutherford, wines like our Oakville Cabernet, which is going to come up. We'll talk about that in the web next webinar, um, the Oakville Cabernet that we're going to release. Uh, these are wines where we where you just find these exceptional vineyards. And, you know, it's our amazing winemaking team putting these wines together. And they're only available to our wine club members. It's something that, you know, we do for you guys because we know you love our Stags of District wines, but, you know, why not have this amazing team create some, some really fun wines just for you guys to enjoy alongside those, those great Stags of District uh, Cabernets. So um, that's that. Uh, harvest, uh, we spoke to that, I believe. So, you know, this year's looking great. Um, could not ask for a better year. Uh, Carol's asking if the Rutherford Appalachian Cabernet is replacing any others. Um, not necessarily, yeah, although the Diamond, Diamond Mountain, Mountain, yeah. So we did have a Diamond Mountain, um, which we loved and adored. Uh, I'll let you speak to that because I, I don't know the full story, but it was something like the vineyard was sold and replanted or. Yeah, there was a small little vineyard. It was actually the first vineyard that David Abreu had ever planted as a vineyard manager. And um, it was on a, there was a house on the property. Uh, the vineyard needed to be replanted. Um, and it was purchased. Uh, we, we had the opportunity to, to purchase it, but it was needed replanting and there was a large house on it that nobody wanted to live on. So that we, um, so because of who we are and because we have had some good success in Napa Valley, oftentimes like the wine uh, that we've made in, from the Rutherford Appalachian, we get offered fruit from some of these these kind of great vineyards, mm -hmm. sometimes little hidden gem vineyards uh, that, uh, that they want it to go to a good home and they know we have a good reputation of making good wine. So um, the Rutherford um, vineyard that we, we made this 2021 from is a good example of that. When we do the 2021 Oakville, there's an, there'll be another, that'll be a little teaser for the next one because mm -hmm. that's a, another really cool vineyard that's um, kind of gone under the radar for, for years and years and years. And it's amazing. And that wine is the 2021 Oakville. It's, oh yeah. So I, I got to taste it with you already. I mean, it's <laughs> it's mind-blowingly good. Yeah. Um, very true, Bill. So we'll talk about that next. Kirk has a great question. I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, he wanted to he wants to know more about the Marla Blanc. And Kirk, I'll tell you that I was thinking about this. Like the wine came out in August, and I don't believe that we covered it in a webinar. I was thinking we should have opened the Marla Blanc. Yeah. We should have had it tonight because it's an incredible wine. It's named for my sister Marla. It was kind of the uh, you know my dad basically wanted to have a uh, a premium white wine because we're well known for making wonderful Sauvignon Blanc and, and, and blending some Semillon into that wine, but we never really had a, a, an upper reserve tier um, white wine. So I believe he went to, you know, task the team with making a, making a wine that could, that could, you know, deserve having the name Marla on it. And uh, well, tell, tell us more about the, the 2022 Marla, which was, which is um, still currently available. 
yeah, it's um, it's the best of the best of our barrels that we have uh, in the cave. And uh, I think 2022 includes some of our first scrapes off our rhythm vineyard here. We, we, we have a little special spot, really rocky, gravelly soil. Um, it's only about an acre, but we decided let's plant some white grapes, some Semillon and Sauvignon Blanc on our property here and, and do that. Um, and we use a little grapes from our estate vineyard up in Calistoga um, to make that and some old vine Semillon from Calistoga that's, that kind of forms that wine. And it's just, we go for real aromatic complexity on that wine. There's only a couple, uh, what was it 90 cases? 90 cases. 90 cases. 90 cases. So, so very four barrels of wines, <laughs> very, very small. Um, and we just want it to be the best of the best. And it's the 2022 is so rich and aromatic and mm -hmm. it's it's quite quite a gorgeous wine so. what would you compare it to if you had you know a couple of wines that you could think that you could inspire it or yeah i mean we kind of look to the kind of legendary wines of, of, of white bordeaux um a little hope on blanc um uh, hope on blanc now is, those wines are just so you know those kind of iconic great wines from uh from bordeaux um that's you know, we look for inspiration from them. We, we're not going to try to recreate that here. We just want to take what we do best here in Napa, Stag Sleep, and try to recreate that in, in, in all of them. Yeah, and mostly Semillon as well. So very rare to find something like that. There's, I mean, hardly any Semillon planted throughout Napa Valley. We've got great estate sources that uh, that we're growing, but um, mostly Semillon, some Sauvignon Blanc, a new French oak, uh, uh, aged fermented as well all fermented yeah. in oak yeah yeah okay. so you know i find it I, I i don't think it's like a big it's not like a big rich wine by any means i mean it's got nice lift to it but certainly a density of flavor and texture and layers and layers and layers on the palate uh and then just beautiful uh, aromatics as well um you know maybe not as uh not as racy as the the Sauvignon Blanc would be um because that includes a little bit more Sauvignon Blanc mm -hmm. um that Semillon tends to have more texturally similar to say what like Chardonnay yeah it's a little yeah. bit more roundness um a fatness yeah richness. and I think the um the 2021 Marla was more a little more mineral driven it kind of reflects the the cool kind of vintage in 2021 and 2022 is a warmer vintage so sure I, while I still think there's a lot of minerals and and vibrant acidity in the 2022 Marla, it's just got a little bit more opulence because yeah. it was a warmer year and a little more generous, so a little bit more orchard fruit. And I should have brought it all up. We taste, we are pouring it right now in our VIP and backstage tasting. So come and see us soon if you can, um, and you can taste it. I um, hosted a group earlier and we tasted it, and they were blown away. Big fans of our our traditional Sauvignon Blanc, but blown away by the Marla. So. Think about it, another great wine for the holidays, um, very versatile food wines. I mean, all the wines we make truly are, are versatile food wise. I mean, if you're thinking about poetry, of course, I mean, what are you gonna have? What are you gonna cook up if you're gonna open a bottle of poetry? Uh, Ribeye? Well, Texas, I kind of, I, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. I do a big inch and a half, two inch ribeye would be would be my go-to exactly. right now. Hard to, hard to not do that, but uh, but gosh, anything, good yeah. pork chop or... Mm -hmm. That pork chop from Mustard's Grill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Mongolian. Mongolian. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think that concludes it. Most of the questions have been answered. Um, what's going on out there? Maybe I, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try this out. I'm gonna I'm gonna detach the, the camera here and, and and take it down to the uh the cellar, um, the catwalk anyway, so you guys can take a look. It looks like they're just doing some pump overs and things like that. So I'm gonna steal some poetry. Yeah, not it's been, not a, long, a, it's been a long day on the morning line. <laughs> Yeah, you guys got it all done pretty quickly uh, because now the most important part of winemaking has been taking place, which is cleaning, right? So here we go. We're going to bring you guys up and take you out here and maybe Chris, come on with me and you can kind of give us an idea of what's happening. Hopefully the internet doesn't cut out and if it does, it was great seeing you all. But here we are down on the, the tank room floor. What we got there? Some pump overs going. We got some cleaning going. Oops. <laughs> yeah, so plumbing over, I, I can't describe um, the smells in this place right now. If we had smell vision you guys would be in heaven. It's just, a lot my gosh, it just smells. Right now, so. Oh my gosh. Come and see us. Come visit us. We'll walk you up here. One more shot of that beautiful, beautiful place to make wine. But thank you all again for, for joining us.
We appreciate your support and we'd be happy to make sure that you've got some great wine for the holidays. So if you need anything else, let us know. And uh, we will look to see you again in December where we'll talk about those releases. So thanks again, Chris. Thanks everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thanks everyone. Cheers. Have a great night.